Oh, hey there. Come on in. We're just about to start. Welcome to My Wife the Dietitian, a fun weekly podcast about nutrition and healthy lifestyle. I'm Rob, and together with my wife Sandra, we invite you to join us on this informative and entertaining journey through the complex world of healthy eating. Join us each week as we strive to help you with transforming your overall health and relationship with food through up to date, evidence based nutrition information. Is there a connection between what we eat and how our mood is? Can nutrients in food affect our mental health? And if so, what are some of those important nutrients that can affect our brain? Today, we talk with Doug Cook, dietitian, the gut brain guy, who hosts his own podcast, Pursuit of Health, for helping the public with dispelling myths about food and nutrition and to help improve the messaging around food, nutrition, and brain health. Doug states there's no essential foods, but there are essential nutrients that come from a variety of foods. We discuss some of the 40 different nutrients that are critical for mental health, mood, and preventing long-term health consequences for the brain. Join Rob and I as we get cerebral in this educational episode with Doug Cook, dietitian. Enjoying the show? You can help others find it and enjoy it too by giving us a five-star rating or review. If you feel like reaching out to us with a question or comment, you can send us an email at mywifetherd at gmail.com. And don't forget to visit our website at mywifethedietitian.com, as well as our social media pages. We're on Facebook, Instagram, and YouTube. Enjoy the show. Welcome to My Wife the Dietitian. Hello, Sandra. Hello, Rob. How are you? I'm good. How are you? I'm doing great. Yeah, we're talking to dietitian Doug Cook, the gut brain guy. Oh, the gut brain guy. Yeah, all about eating for healthy brain. Oh, that's uh, a good thing to know, I guess, right? And mood. You kind of forget about your brain when you're thinking about health for some reason. You just think it's like head down, maybe. Like your food doesn't go up. It, it all goes down and affects everything like below. But your brain is all connected and... That's my silly take on it anyway, but uh, Doug will, uh, will school us on everything we need to know about eating and brain health. and Yeah, he talks all about um, explaining how nutrients can affect our brain by the fundamentals of rebuilding brain matter, helping with the operations of the brain, and just to keep our mind and our brain firing on all cylinders so that we're brighter and less foggy brained. Yeah, that's pretty important. I think a lot of people have felt that way. So it'll be good to understand the connection and have a few tips to follow. Yeah, our lifestyle connection, our eating habits, our diet, and how it all impacts our our mood, our brain, and our overall health. So yeah, it's a good interview with Doug. And I'm sure lots of people are going to get a ton of good information out of this. Ah, All right. Well, stay tuned, everyone. We'll be right back with Doug Cook. Today we have a special guest, Doug Cook, the gut brain guy, and we really are excited to have you on and uh, talk with you today about nutrition for brain health. Yeah, I'm happy to be here. It's something I'm really passionate about. We're going to talk about the brain, but yeah, I love gut and brain uh, health. And that's where I'm, I'm kind of settling back on that. I've kind of spread myself too thin on topics. I'm just going to narrow on the stuff that I'm really um, jazzed up about, I guess. Awesome. Okay. Perfect. Can you t- tell us a bit about your background, yourself, who you are, what you do, and who you help in your work? Uh, yeah. Briefly, you know, I've been a dietitian for 23 plus years. I've uh, dabbled in a lot of everything because I never said no. I always had this fear of missing out and wanted to try everything. And so, <laughs> you know, it, it, it lent itself well in terms of getting a lot of experience. So I've done a little bit of private practice, consulting, hospital work, writing, presenting a lot of kind of stuff. But um, right now I work at the Center for Addiction and Mental Health in Toronto, which is Canada's largest mental health and addictions hospital, but I'm not wearing that hat today. Okay. Uh, but it, it has informed my work and what I'm going to talk about. And right now I'm kind of, you know, in terms of clinical work, I'm really getting away from being a generalist and really going to start focusing on 
the gut brain connection because they really are one entity, believe it or not. Absolutely. I love that you're doing that because I think we need more expertise and someone who's got some media work and communication and can kind of uh, distill this like uh, complex information to more practical information for the public. I think that's so awesome. And part of the reason that I reached out to you was I saw you speaking on nutrition and brain health and all the information you had. It was just like a wealth of knowledge. And obviously, you've done a lot of work in this area. And I mean, with your name, the gut brain guy, <laughs> that's your tagline. <laughs> you are, you are an expert in this. So I'm so glad that you could come talk to us today. Yeah, happy to do that. And um, yeah, I'm a bit of a nerd and a geek. And as an introvert, if I'm not pulled away from the books or the computers, I would just be lost in this content or any content forever. So <laughs> I am a self-described voracious consumer of content but you sound um, just like so sandra. i know a lot yeah <laughs> well, wrong? i said you sound just like sandra she's the same way i think it comes from a, a place of anxiety because some people think that's a bad thing but i just if i want to know a topic i just want to know it so well that i can just you know field any question or anything from any angle so unless i understand something well i just kind of get uncertain it's probably Absolutely. not the worst addiction, really. I mean, like, <laughs> like, I call Sandra an information junkie. I mean, she's got like four or five books on the go all the time. And she's just <laughs> like loves information and reading and just, you know, gathering. Like she's like an encyclopedia, which is a good thing, I think. And it's it served us well anyway with what we're doing. So there good. could be worse habits, right? Yeah, oh, right, true. Right. So <laughs> I have some questions that I, I kind of was thinking I wanted to ask you because you're the gut brain guy. Um, is there a connection with what we eat and our mood? A hundred percent there is. Food is basically affects, when we think about food and mood, um, it affects our mood or, and our brain in, in three kind of fundamental ways. Food is delicious. So food, you may have heard this idea, food has hedonic properties. So people know what, if you don't know what hedonia is, you know what hedonism is. So it's oh, always yeah. been pa painted in a negative light, like debauchery and that kind of thing. But uh, hedonia is a mental health parameter, I guess, of mental status. So when people are a hedona, have a hedonia, they're flat and all that kind of thing. So there's nothing oh. wrong with hedonic aspects of eating. So when you eat whatever it is, it could be a Krispy Kreme. For me, it's a bacon cheeseburger. You know, all the pistons are firing, the dopamine's are released, so that the <laughs> serotonin, and, it, and it, re, it rewards us, right? If it didn't, we would have died off as a species like thousands of years ago. So it, it reinforces seeking out that thing. And there's no wrong reason to eat. So when you've had a, a crappy day and you want something to lift your spirits, that's that makes us feel good. Um, yeah. But food also provides the nutrients needed for proper brain function, including mood regulation. And that's the physiological aspects. And then food is the very building blocks of our anatomy or our biology. So we need the nutrients that we get from food for growth repair and maintenance of the brain tissue. So we sometimes forget that our bodies are not static. They're constantly being rebuilt. And if you think about the elements on the periodic table in high school, chemistry like we, we have to get that from food, all those elements. So it could be sulfur, it could be oxygen, nitrogen, et cetera. So all of that goes into the brain. So what we eat and drink absolutely influences the brain structure, which in turn informs or influences brain function and oh moves one of those aspects. Oh my gosh. Wow. And you know, there was a quote that I heard on, uh, you have a podcast that uh, called Pursuit of Health. And there was a quote that I really, really appreciated. I wrote it down because I thought, this is so interesting. There's there's no essential foods. Mm -hmm. There's essential nutrients. And we get those from a variety of foods. So we get our nutrients from food. And food is the language of nutrition, which is another quote I love. But yeah, so in saying that, it means kind of like if someone has a food allergy or an intolerance or they can't eat a certain food, that's not like the worst thing in the world because there's other ways to get those nutrients. Is that kind of what you meant? Yeah. I mean, growing up as a baby dietitian, I was taught the food guide. I was taught like, you know, you have, there's these four food groups. I'm still a big proponent of that. Don't get me wrong. 
Yeah. But I remember being in a chat room. This is how old I am on a computer in the library. <laughs> and, and that's when the zone diet came out and people were freaking out. I was freaking <laughs> out. I was in the chat room being all self-righteous saying it's a low carb <laughs> diet and you're going to die if you cut out grains and all that <laughs> kind of thing. And now it's, of course, this is one strategy with, with the diabetes organizations around the world is to, you know, cut carbs as a strategy down to 40% is perfectly healthy. And that's all the zone diet was, was 40% carbs. Oh. But you know, the idea of eliminating a food group was tantamount to, you know, a death sentence. But, you know, it's really about the variety brings in, decreases the, the chance that you're not going to get the nutrients, but there is no essential food, but there's, you know, roughly, depending how you slice the pie, 40 plus nutrients that we need. So you can get those from a variety of foods. So if somebody eats grain free, it's not the end of the world. I think okay. what happens a lot of time is with, especially with these kind of diets, is people hear, okay, I, I, I should cut out carbs, but they don't replace the nutrients they're getting from those carbs with something else. You know, just like when someone says, oh, I want to eat, <clears throat> I want to eat vegetarian, they stop eating meat, but they don't eat good stuff in its place. Or they'll just eat, you know, lots of bread and crackers and, oh, that's not meat, so I must be vegan or vegetarian or whatever, but it's like, no, nah, not quite. Yeah, yeah, for sure. So like any dietary pattern can have gaps and we know they have gaps. So yeah, you still need balance. You still need to get those nutrients. It just, you know, it's, it might be a little more difficult if you reduce the, the inventory, if you will. But sure. um, yeah, it's, uh, that's exactly right. Absolutely. Okay. So with talking about nutrients in food, can nutrients in food affect someone's mental health? Yeah. Uh, the short answer is yes. They, they can't not affect it. So, you know, on a, on a, on a short term, immediate basis, you know, if the brain doesn't get its preferred fuel source and under normal circumstances, that's glucose, a hundred percent glucose, the brain doesn't use fat like other cells can. It doesn't burn fatty acids, nor does it um, use protein for fuel. It's exclusively glucose, um, like the red blood cells. So in the short term, you know, food and, and glucose is a nutrient. If you're not getting that fuel source, you feel it. You know, I mean, you know, those commercials of hangry or whatever, like, yeah, the ugly guy's Joe Pesci <laughs> and he's, right. he eats like a Snickers bar and then he's suddenly happy. <laughs> um, yeah. So your mood, like a side effect of mood is one of them is being irritated and grumpy and, and, and focused and that type of stuff. So you can definitely impact that on the short term. And then long term, it's really about getting those nutrients to basically like there's chemical reactions. I know that might sound complex, but then the nutrients are substrates, which allow all these kind of cogs to kind of work together. And so without a steady supply of these nutrients, um, the analogy I use is like a light bulb. So if our brain with maximum output is 100 watts, but we're only getting enough fuel and vitamins and minerals to produce 60 watts, you're, you're just going to be dimmer. You're just going to, you're going to feel it. It's going to affect thinking, mood, and, and long-term, you know, cognition and risk for dementia and other things. That's a great analogy. Like it's very visual, like you can totally picture that, you know, that's, that's a really good way to put it. Oh, thanks. <laughs> Is that your I never know where these things land because they well, just I can, <laughs> I can picture it as a meme too, you know, like, like you can, you can picture it visually. So that's, yeah, that's a perfect one. Yeah. Like I see this picture of a person with a light bulb over their head and then a whole bunch of like a rainbow, different colors of vegetables and fruits and whole grains and lean meats and the good oils and the all that above it. And then there's the other picture beside with a light bulb that's kind of not quite on, like it's kind of dim. And then it's got above it like, um, you know, ultra processed foods and like you know, preservatives and deep fried, fatty, greasy foods that kind of, you know, like kind of a junk food diet or the actually the the um, North American diet. Pretty much, yeah, there you right? go. It's like that old one <laughs> yeah. where the, it's like your brain on drugs and your brain on whatever, not drugs, I guess. Do you remember that from like the 80s or something? The egg in the frying pan? Yeah, That's yeah. Totally That's totally why one. I remember that. Yeah. <laughs> I can't remember the rest of it, but yeah, it brings that <laughs> back. Right. That was pretty visual. And actually, that's one that leads me to, um, so thinking of like nutrients that might affect our brain. I know there's like in eggs, for instance, I know people used to throw out egg yolks because they were on a low fat diet and, 
you know, fat was villainized. And, um, but actually that egg yolk has choline in it and we're not getting enough choline in our diet in general, like the average North American person is not getting enough choline and isn't choline like part of the chemical structure of acetylcholine? And yeah, it's can 100%. You yeah. Just, yeah, yeah, okay. Yeah, so yeah, there's roughly 40 nutrients that the brain needs, depending on how you slice and dice the proteins into the amino acids, et cetera. And so we know from the Canadian Community Health Survey and Canadian Health Measures Survey that any given category, like age category and sex, like you name a nutrient and we're not, there's a huge percentage of the, those segments of the population that aren't meeting the minimum, let alone the, the optimal, which we don't know what that is. So they all play an important role. But yeah, egg yolks, I mean, I'm a fan of eggs. I'm an out and proud omnivore. So I like nutrient dense mm -hmm. foods and, you know, the most nutrient dense with the most highly bioavailable nutrients are animal foods. That's just a statement of fact. It's not a matter of opinion. Right. Um, but choline is super important. So we don't, just recently we got, if you know anything about nutrient recommendations, there's something called the AI, the adequate intake. And that's a best guess that we think people need. We don't even have a recommended intake. Uh, and so it's roughly five, like we'll, we'll split the difference. It's roughly 500 milligrams, uh, a little less for women, a little more for men. So it's probably one of the most important contributors to preventing fatty liver, um, but it's also important for acetylcholine production, which is a, an important neurotransmitter. At least dopamine and serotonin and norepinephrine get all the attention because we have a lot of the medications regulate their metabolism. But yeah, choline is essential. It gets acetylated. It's acetylcholine, and it's really needed for nerve conduction. So not just mood and brain function, but anything throughout the nervous system. So including the regulation of motility in the gut through the, like the vagus nerve. So, and we, 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 I don't get off topic, but if the gut's not happy, the brain's not happy and vice versa. But yeah, we need a lot more choline and the best sources are liver, egg yolks, fatty fish. There's some in green vegetables and soy. So I'm not poo-hooing those things, but um, yeah, it's, it's critical. I work with um, prenatal groups in part of one of the things I do, and that's one nutrient of concern for pregnant moms is the choline because it's really important for development of the, the nervous system for the, the fetus and the baby. And so that's another recommendation is trying to get more whole eggs in the diet over the week to get some of that choline because, I mean, some people will eat liver but and fatty fish definitely. But yeah, it's a it's a tricky one because it's not really a favorite food for many people. I mean, egg yolks are pretty easy and convenient and a lot accessible for people. So those ones, that's why I always um, talk about eggs and trying to get at least seven eggs in a week. And with that, you also get the the vitamin D, like a good amount of vitamin D in your diet. Even though in Canada, I definitely think people should be taking a vitamin D supplement, uh, especially in the winter, just with our uh, latitude and not getting that uh, hormone conversion with the skin because of, you know, the vitamin D is a sunshine vitamin. But uh, actually, that that leads me to a question about, uh, like, what are some nutrients that affect our brain? Well, we can narrow down to a few of them. I mean, like I said, there are 40. Yeah. I just would like to give a little bit of uh, a nugget, not that I'm an expert in this, but another way you might leverage choline for that patient population is it yes. plays a role, and you can look this up, it plays a role in neurotube defect prevention, like folate. So if you kind of pair it with folate, you might get buy-in. Yes. Um, we think about neuron development, but it's also uh, I, it's something I scanned once. But um, yeah, so for the brain, pretty much all vitamins and minerals are important. The more critical ones would be the B vitamins. Um, that's the ones I kind of push the most. I mean, we need vitamin A and vitamin D and a whole bunch of minerals, but those can be stored in our bodies a little better. But the B vitamins are water soluble, so tissue levels deplete within a few weeks if not eating them well. And there's a whole bunch of risk factors for poor B status. Uh, it's just a coincidence that vitamin B... <laughs> The, you know, the letter B I was gonna say, corresponds yeah. with the brain. But, ah, uh, right. Yeah. Um, <laughs> so all of them, there's eight of them. They all play, a f you know, like it, for me, it, I always kind of take it back to the very thing I hated in undergrad. So I'm, I'm obsessed now with energy production. So you remember glycolysis and the Krebs cycle and the electron transport chain and the mitochondria. So I'm just all about that. So yeah. 
what I used to hate is now something I willfully go out and read about. So mm-hmm. it, again, it all goes back to, to energy production. And so when the cogs aren't turning, the energy output is low. And if you look at the deficiency of every B vitamin, they all have a psychiatric presentation. Oh. So it's it's often overlooked, uh, the B status, because we assume if somebody's eating relatively well and they don't have pellagra or beriberi, that they're getting enough B vitamins. So that's the difference between a clinical deficiency and then a functional deficiency where the all the needs aren't being met. And there's good evidence with B vitamins for treatment-resistant depression. So you get more bang for your buck when you kind of optimize the intake of these vitamins, but all nutrients. And then if anyone's using like medications, you'll get more, which just makes sense. Like the body, the medications can only work <laughs> as well as the physiology is is optimized. So Unfortunately, without naming names, certain places are just so drug focused and then they're not focusing on like foundational nutrition. I mean, all they're thinking about is the impact of the meds and diabetes risk, but it's 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 much more basic than that. Yeah. Yeah. Are there specific because there's you said there's twelve B vitamins or there's eight? Eight. There's a, there's eight. eight. Okay. And are there specific ones that people take? Because I it's I always find it confusing buying B vitamins because there's so many options. Is there sort of an easy go-to for most people to, which one to take? Yeah. So of course we want food. Like I'm not anti-food, uh, food first, uh, but there's always, of course. A, yeah, <laughs> there's always a gap, but the best thing to do, like, so normally you can use B, any vitamin to, to target a very specific deficiency. So if someone has alcohol use disorder and they're at risk for thiamine deficiency, they'll often just give thiamine because that's that's the linchpin. Is that the word? That's the, the bottleneck. Sure. Of, when we talk about energy production, it's magnesium and thiamine. So they'll just give thiamine. But I just like, it's kind of silly for me to think you should just, you know, take one at a time. They, they all work together. They show up in nature together. And so just take a good quality B complex. Right. Okay. Um, where you get all, all, all eight in addition to, in, in addition to food was is the best thing for the brain for sure yeah absolutely and, so and that's- yeah like th- sorry the thiamine and niacin and riboflavin and then we got the folate and b12 b9 i guess is like um that's folate right yep yeah yep. yeah and b7 is biotin biotin right right okay. poor little biotin mm-hmm. doesn't have the sexy pr <laughs> That's right. Not, not like yet. The other ones. We'll see what we can <laughs> do about yet. that. <laughs> yeah, that's right. So, and, as, and like as far really, as, sorry. As far as foods for vitamin B, is there like a quick list? Like it's vegetables and grains and that sort of thing, isn't it? Is that it? It really is diverse. So all plant foods and all animal foods have them. So you know, it, it really is just eating a nutrient dense food uh, diet, which you know. I, these words are a bit abstract, but when we talk about, quote, whole foods or wholesome foods or, you know, less processed foods sure. is really the way to go. Right. Yeah. So it's it's all foods, all plant foods and animal foods are good sources of B vitamins. There you go. All right. Some are heavier, like B12s in animal foods for sure, but the rest of them, you can get them in a diverse diet. Perfect. Yeah, that's a nutrient of concern for vegans. So if uh, we did a a talk with Scott Fickerson back earlier, uh, an earlier episode, and he is a professor at Santa Barbara University in California, and he does um, running, vegan running for athletes. So um, that was one nutrient of concern that he has to supplement or get through nutritional yeast and different ways to get the B12, but that's definitely one that, and that's the thing, like if you're following a kind of a strict diet where you're cutting out whole food groups, then you are more likely to have some of these nutrients of concern that you'd have to be careful of and like try to supplement or add in some other way, I guess. Do you see that in your work? Like in terms of um, different diets, uh, like vegan, for instance, what about how do they get the omega threes? Yeah, so I just I just want to not lose a, a critical point. So even for omnivores, obviously there's a lower risk of people eat animal foods, but when we hit fifty, roughly and above, we lose our ability not lose it. It it the ability to absorb B twelve is diminished, oh, and really? so B twelve is a nutrient of concern in everyone as they get older. Which is why most governments, even Health Canada, recommends either taking B twelve supplement and multi or eating foods that are fortified with B twelve because we lose the ability to basically extract it from foods that are rich in B twelve. 
And B12 is really important for myelin production. So that's the fatty coating on the neurons that helps transmission work. So yes, it's it's much more of a concern for vegans and vegetarians if they're eating dairy and egg. But, you know, I, I just I want everybody to take a good quality multi omnivore or not. But um, yeah, so your, your question about the omega-3s, it's not, that's a really good point to bring up. I don't I want people to remember one thing. I think I say this in every talk. <laughs> so there's a whole bunch of different types of omega-3s. It just refers to their unique structures. And so there's one form called ALA, alpha linolenic acid, which is found in chia and flax and soy and canola. And then there's the longer chain. They get cha- modified um, in animals to EPA and DPA and DHA. And so it's those longer chain ones, EPA, DHA, that are the most biologically potent. So for vegans, they can get it from algae. So um, they can't rely on flax or chia to get that omega-3. Like animals can eat the the ALA in plant foods, like chickens can eat flax and they can change it into EPA and DHA. We can't as a, as a species very well. Hmm. So they have to get it from algae oil. Interesting. Okay. Okay. And walnuts. Is walnuts uh, in there as a ALA? Walnuts. Yeah. All the plant sources are great for ALA. Um, and then uh, somebody is homeless or in a shelter system or have like a lot of substance use, we don't see ALA deficiencies. So we, it's, it's easy to meet that requirement. What pees me, POs me off or whatever the word is, <laughs> is when producers of foods that have ALA try to convey a false equivalence to EPA and DHA. So they'll say like walnuts are a good source of omega-3s and we know omega-3s are good for brain health and heart health. You know, a quarter cup of chopped walnuts has the same amount of omega-3s as three ounces of salmon, but it's apples to oranges, right? Just like there's different types of dogs and you've got chihuahuas and German shepherds. Right. No one would think they're the same. So ALA is not the same as EPA and DHA. So mm. it's a bit misleading. Totally. Okay. Yeah. So populations like vegan populations, they must be getting like a good quality algae oil. I mean, just I'm thinking just through the generations. Yeah, there's, there's, it's an essential fat. So our bodies cannot make it. Right. Our bodies can make all the saturated and monounsaturated fats that it needs. We don't need that from food. We get it in food. Right. But we have to get omega-6s and omega-3s. And you have three options, fish and seafood, eggs, more so in omega-3 enriched eggs or supplements. And then the five sources for supplements is algae, squid, seal oil, uh, fish roe, or fish. Oh, interesting. Oh, that's so cool. I've never heard it um, like all listed that way. So that's... Yeah, uh, exactly. And then if I take it one step further for one more rule to follow, which everyone loves food rules, <laughs> is that the omega-3s in fish roe or fish roe supplements or eggs... Yeah. Or fish is in the preferred form, phosphatidyl um, choline based DHA, and it's absorbed much better than the oil expressed from the, the, the body, the fish that, we, that goes into fish oil supplements. Oh. But any omega 3 would be better than none. There you go. That's oh, wow. the bottom line, I guess. That's yeah. a good starting yeah. point, anyway. <laughs> yeah. No, thanks for explaining absolutely. that. That's, uh, that's all new to me. So. It's nice to have it uh, all laid out. Yeah. <laughs> hey, Rob learned something today. <laughs> there we go. There we go. <laughs> yeah. And something that we ask all of our guests because uh, it kind of gets, you know, us to know you better. Um, we talk all about this nutrients and foods and all that. So when you're going to a potluck, what dish would you share or would you bring to share? And I know it's not like a, you know, plate of supplements. So <laughs> Yeah, what a plate, would that a plate be? of fish row so everyone gets their <laughs> right. omega-3s. There we go. That'd be good. <laughs> <laughs> it could be. I like my supplements. But I think I would take, it have to be reheated, but I would take tuna melts. Oh, that's yeah. kind of my favorite. Yeah, that's totally. A, that's a great idea. Milk. Made with Miracle Whip, not mayo, because oh, yeah. I like a sweet yeah, there you <laughs> go. Is that, dressing. <laughs> is that the difference with Miracle Whip? It's sweeter? Yeah, there's sugar and I don't know what else they put in it, yeah. but... Yeah, I mean, you could probably make it with pickle juice and make it sweeter or I, something. Like yeah, I've always bread noticed and butter pickle juice. I've always noticed the difference in flavor, but I just never really paid attention to what it was. But yeah, that yeah, it's a salad good. dressing. It's not mayo, so yeah, it's yeah. a little sweeter. Oh, there you go. <laughs> learned a, learned well, another little awesome. tidbit. 
<laughs> oh, absolutely. Thank you so much, Doug. This has been so valuable and just like, wow, you've, you're a wealth of information. Like it's just, that's why I had to get you on here because after watching you in that presentation for, I think it was like an hour and a half or two hours. I think it was in two parts. There was so much, just mm -hmm, like Q&A mm -hmm. and everything. And uh, yeah, it's just like, wow. <laughs> It's just a lot, eh, Rob? It is. You could teach. I mean, that's that's. It sounded like a lesson to me in a good in a good way. I mean, it's like you know your stuff for sure. That it shows that you've uh, you've done your homework and you're good at explaining things and and painting those pictures, which is uh, which is a big part of education. So, yeah, hats off. You've, yeah, you've thanks. Got that, uh, you've got that part down. Yeah, it's kind of what I like to do, which is where I'm taking my practice now. I'm going to create some online programs. I'm better at kind of, I think, just spewing what's packed away in my brain. Yeah, yeah, yeah for sure. <laughs> well, it totally makes sense. It's great because you're impacting the world, like you're helping people. And that's what it's all about, right? So that you're translating the information that you read about and that you keep your finger on the pulse of, and then you can make it into a digestible form for other people to, to use in their own life. And, you you know, those little nuggets are so important and, and it's just so helpful too for people's health and their brain health and gut health. So, I mean, that's a whole different topic and maybe we'll have you back on here in the future to talk more about some of your courses and uh, what other things you're, you're doing in the future. Yeah, sure. <laughs> awesome. awesome. So in the show notes, we'll have a link to your website um, and uh, I think I saw on Instagram. Is that something or where do you, where would you like people to look for your resources? Yeah, I think I'm most active on Instagram. So I just changed my profile. It's just back to my name, Doug Cook RD. Okay. Perfect. Yeah. We'll link that in the show notes. That's an easy one to find. So awesome. Anything else, Sandra? No, I think that's it. And I really appreciate your flexibility with the timing with this and with uh, all of the information that you've shared with us. And I mean, whatever you're doing in your lifestyle and your diet, it's working. I mean, you look so much younger than what you said you've been practicing for many years. And that's incredible to to think because uh, I mean, I, I haven't seen you in person, but I've seen you on video and I've seen you on your website. And I'm just like, whoa. <laughs> It's working. <laughs> there you go. Um, yeah, no problem. Thank you very much for having me on. I love the format. Um, I've never done a kind of conversational. A husband and wife format? Ooh, well, no, just the two, <laughs> the two interviewers. Um, so, yeah, it's very conversational, which always makes it, uh, I think, better for, for everybody. Yeah, it's a little easier to listen to. Including the list. Yeah, 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 for yeah. sure. And it's funny, too, Doug. We're actually, um, I mean, you're on the East Coast, but Rob and I are in different rooms, so we can't see each other. We're, like, on different oh. computers and stuff. So I, I didn't tell you that. I won't ask. Start, but, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> that's all good. No, that's great. Well, thank you so much. And uh, yeah, we'll talk to you again soon. Okay. You're welcome. Thanks, Doug. Well, that was quite educational. Yeah, he's very intellectual. Yeah, I kind of had to up my game to, to keep up with you guys. <laughs> well, he's got 23 years plus experience. And he is, as he says, he loves delving into information. And obviously, he uses it in uh, practical setting with uh, clients and patients so yeah yeah, yeah and that was that was good info for sure so thank you Doug for sharing that oh it was amazing and uh, yeah we did highlight some uh, important nutrients like the brain nutrients such as omega-3 fatty acids and the sources in our food and also the B vitamins mm -hmm. yeah all eight of them to be or not to be exactly that's the classic B vitamin joke right it's ours. I wonder if we're the only ones who use that or if, or if everyone talking about B vitamins does that. <laughs> I don't know. Yeah. But including the choline and biotin, as Doug says, the least sexy one or poor little biotin, biotin. just never gets any attention. <laughs> <laughs> and just uh, the take home message of eating a balanced, whole food, varied diet to get all the important nutrients for our overall health plus our brain health. Yeah, once again, it comes back to that, just eating a, a healthy, well-rounded diet and avoiding the bad stuff and including more of the good stuff. Yeah, and the good stuff, it helps with those three fundamentals by rebuilding brain matter, helping with brain function, like the function and operations of the brain and how it works, and 
helping the engine of your brain to fire on all cylinders, like kind of like that whole meme we were talking about. about yeah, the whole the, light bulb like, thing. That was awesome. That was so That was the visual. most like clear analogy I've heard in a long time. Very clear. Not a dimmer, but clear. Exactly. Very clear <laughs> light bulb. Yeah, that's awesome. I really liked, you know, it really helps to understand a concept when there's a visual representation like in words like that. Oh, for sure. Especially, I mean, I'm a, a very visual learner. So for someone like me, and I'm sure lots of people are like that, uh, I need that. You know, it's it helps you remember it. It helps you understand it better. So yeah, I really appreciate when people can put their words into a, into a visualization like that. Yeah. Yeah. It, it creates a picture in the brain and, and then it, it, all comes together and the pieces of the puzzle are all like more clear. Exactly. Yeah, you got it. Yeah. Oh, that was great. And then we did reference a few episodes or previous episodes that we've talked to other people like uh, with Scott Fickerson in episode 48, Vegan for Runners, and how he gets his omega-3 and B12. And we also talked, well, in the past, we've talked about food and mood on various episodes. So Episode 44 was uh, Food and Mood, Are They Related? So that's a really good one for people to go back to. And then the Mind Diet and the Whole Food Eating uh, to Help Prevent Dementia. And that was episode 14. And that obviously has to do with the brain health. We did a Nutrition Nuggets too, didn't we? You got it. Yeah. Food and Mood. It was our very first Nutrition Nuggets. Okay. And it was food and mood. Yeah. There you go. So lots of things to look back on. Yeah. And then the, remember around Valentine's Day, our first season, we did all about sexy foods and foods with benefits and getting in the mood with food. And we touched on all those issues about the dopamine, the serotonin, all these brain chemicals that make you feel good and how nutrition and diet and lifestyle are all part of that puzzle in yeah, terms they all, of they all contribute yeah and affect you either negatively or positively depending on what what your lifestyle and diet look like exactly yeah and i think those were back episode six and seven way back when way back when sexy foods <laughs> that was great oh my goodness wow well i'm so glad we talked to doug today and i definitely want to get him back in the future and hear more about uh, the work he's doing and the courses he has for people and the impact he's making in the world. And uh, as a side note, do you know what we had for lunch yesterday, Doug? <laughs> I haven't eaten one of these in years. <laughs> we had bacon cheeseburgers. <laughs> it was so good. <laughs> it was just something that someone, someone oddly, a group we were hanging with was like, we should get some cheeseburger, bacon cheeseburgers at this burger place. It's supposed to be really good. And I'm like, that's kind of ironic. We were just talking about those this morning. And <laughs> Sure enough, that's what we ate, and they were good. <laughs> the power of suggestion, I guess. Mm-hmm. I never even thought of that. That's so funny until I listened to the episode, and it's like, oh my gosh, he talked about. That. Oh, I totally thought of it yeah. as I was eating it. I'm like, <laughs> man, that guy's got some uh, some influence. <laughs> that's right. It was really good, though. Yeah. So thanks, Doug. Appreciate that. <laughs> I'm sure the restaurant appreciated it too. Yeah. Right. <laughs> Awesome. Well, thanks for joining us today, everyone. Be sure to check out Doug's, uh, I guess, Instagram and website. We'll link those in the show notes. Uh, And you can check out our uh, website as well. That's mywifethedietitian.com. If you have questions for us or comments, feel free to send us an email at mywifetherd at gmail.com. We're also on YouTube, Facebook, and Instagram. We've got some uh, new things popping up there. Uh, So be sure to check those out as well. Also, don't forget to rate and review the show. That always helps keep things moving forward here for us. So we'll appreciate whatever you can do there. Yeah, and we have a Nutrition Nuggets coming up on Wednesday. And we talk all about poke bowls and grain bowls and Buddha bowls. All the bowls. Yeah. Yeah, awesome. Yeah, so that will be Wednesday. So be sure to join us for that. And until then, have a great week. Thanks, Rob. Thanks for joining us today on My Wife the Dietitian. If you like what you heard, don't be shy. Leave us a comment or review and be sure to share our podcast with your friends. If you'd like to hear more, hit that subscribe button. You can also follow us on our social media pages for updates, episode trailers, and other odds and ends. For more info and links on what we discussed on today's episode, check the show notes. We'll be back next week with another informative and fun-filled episode. 